What is up, you guys? Back at you with another video. Today, we're talking about the top five 3D printing mistakes I made and you were bound to make too. How to avoid them, tips and tricks to how to improve your 3D prints so you can get the best models made on your brand new 3D printer. Hey guys, my name is Anton. I do content on all things 3D. And if you enjoy 3D printing content, tutorials, or just watching me make really cool models like this guy over here, um, hit the supplement down below. You won't regret it. It's great content. You definitely enjoy it. So without further ado, let's get into it. What are the top five mistakes that I have made in 3D printing and you'll probably make that you can address and keep an eye out for? Number five, I would say print orientation. That one is not a most obvious one that you would think of, but is a very important one. It does three things actually. Number one, your print quality will turn out differently. Your print material that you use and your printing time. Now, personally, I'd rather get the best quality I can, a decent amount of usage of my filament, and time that doesn't have to be fast. I'd rather my prints not go ridiculously quick as long as they come out good, because I don't want to reprint stuff, right? That's a lot worse. So, models like Rick Sanchez. This guy looks great, and you actually don't need too many supports going up to his arms and stuff, but it does a lot around the hair. So when you look at this model, you think, oh, you can just print him up, right? Believe it or not, printing them upside down, you only need some supports around the hairs. That's it. Everything else will go well. And in fact, what's awesome is the quality will stay very, very well. The more you 3D print, the more you'll realize of how certain models work better or worse. This is a very important thing to learn for 3D printing. And I'm just talking about mistakes. If you want to know more of an in-detail way of orientation and things to look out for, I actually have a video for that, pure orientation and my settings. Go check those out. So yeah, you really want to be careful how you orient certain prints. Number four, printing mistakes that you will probably make your slicer and G-code issues, right? So many times you may print something and be wondering, what is going on? Why is this not working? Well, check out what your slicer settings are. Now, I'm not saying go way above from stock settings. Stock settings for your printer for Cura, for the most part, is going to be good. If you want to get in more details, as I mentioned, I got a Cura settings video. But sometimes weird stuff happens when you hit slice and everything looks good in the preview, but you print that G-code and it keeps failing. It, it can make layers be completely gone. Stuff happens. Certain things, certain elements where you can tell it to Z-hop when retracted or print a raft or a brim and different settings like that, you will learn it's very important. So if you're having a print that is just failing over and over, try to orient it a little bit different. Look about your settings and see and read. Like if you navigate your mouse over them, it describes what that setting does and it'll give you a clue and insight as to what may potentially making your print fail. Now, I wish I could tell you right now in 30 seconds of, hey, these three settings, but I don't know what model you're making. There's a lot of models. It comes with 3D printing, but keep an eye out for those. Work with those. Always try new different things. Sit there. I sit for hours slicing stuff for several times and seeing just the best orientation the way where it looks very successful, where there's not certain things that can mess up, and depends on which model you're printing, it may be worth your time. So before you completely stress out, think your printer's a failure, you're a failure, look at your slicer settings, change certain things and tweak some stuff, it'll help your prints much better. The third thing, oh my goodness, the top three mistake you'll make. I see this one all the time, it drives me nuts, and I get it, but I don't at the same time. Upgrades. People get this brand new 3D printer, and even before they get it, I see this all the time. Hey guys, I just ordered my 3D printer. It's going to be shipped here in a couple of weeks. What upgrades should I put on it? What upgrades? Hey, you've had this model upgrade. Can I get an upgrade? Can I get an upgrade? Look, there's certain, and I've done some minor upgrades on my 3D printer, and I have a video on that, of course. You can check it out. But this is a mistake that I have made and people make all the time is... It's almost like a sports car you just got, that 3D printer, and you're like, all right, let me upgrade it. Let me add uh, better stuff here, there. Let me customize it. It's going to be awesome, you know? Don't rush into that, okay? Take your time. Take your printer as it is from stock, print with it, learn how to calibrate it, learn how to 3D print well, and then start changing things. Every time, I am telling you, every time I've done an upgrade, it has given me results that I didn't expect, negative ones. And I'm not saying that app upgrade was bad, it's just you're complicating the system more. You're adding more variables to the equation, and it's harder to solve things. You think your 3D prints aren't working? 
and you think it's just the slicer settings or the orientation, well guess what, maybe it's that new wham bam upgrade you put in, the bed adhesion is terrible. Or it's the fact that you put in new fans and it knocked off the bed leveling. Or you put in octo print and good gosh, you know, it won't read the G code fast because you're not using the local SD. It could be, I'm probably speaking a different language for some of you guys right now. It, it gets very crazy and finicky, so I'm telling you don't rush with the upgrades. Do one at a time after you've understood and learned how to calibrate your printer and only do these upgrades, not just to have them, but to do a, address an issue. If it ain't broke, don't fix it, you know? <laughs> so keep an eye out for that. Upgrades are nice, but they make stuff complicated. And I've seen oftentimes people get a printer, they don't even print a single thing. They start upgrading on it, and then they say, my prints won't even work. I can't print anything at all. And turns out they modified something on there, and they didn't even know what that modification was supposed to do. So, you know, hesitate on the upgrades. All right, so there you go, there's three for you. So what's second on my list? All the way up there, we're getting to the top two. Filmic quality. Um, and this one's kind of a given, but kind of not. It, it's, you never realize how important it is until you see and try out different things. There's different types of materials you can use, and I'll slightly touch on that, but filmic quality, there's a roll that comes with your 3D printer. Don't print with that. Don't expect any good prints to come with that. That is not good filmic quality and filament quality will greatly affect your prints. So if you're sitting there and you're stressed and you're mad and you're like, look, I've got all these steps down. I haven't done crazy upgrades. I have done the orientation, the slicer's perfect. Everything is good, but this print is just printing out so ugly or looks so weird or it can't do that or this. What kind of film are you? Has it worked for you before? Is it good and recommended? I've used PLA Plus extensively and PLA extensively. Some people ask me about PETG and TPUs and all those. I have not used those extensively, so I won't talk about those in detail. PLA, I, I've used probably about 15 rolls, um, and I've used about seven different brands. Every single different brand looks a little bit different, and certain ones look so much better quality, and I did nothing different. It's just the filament. It's much better quality. PLA Plus. And sometimes certain things that you're printing will print better with certain filament than others. So if you think you're at a complete loss and you have no clue what you're doing, maybe that $12 kilogram roll wasn't so much of a steal. Maybe it's $12 for a reason. I've had filament that wasn't wound up properly, it snapped and break, or it's such poor quality, the prints would just crack and break super easy. It was insane. And storing your filament is correctly is very important making sure you don't tangle is very important and initially that it's the right brand right quality i have some links down below which ones i like you don't have to purchase those but if you do and uh, want to test them out i do recommend them number one man we've been talking for a little bit what in the world could be the number one printer issue mistake that everyone makes i have made this one and i have lost count of how many people have talked to me with a certain issue and this was the culprit Bed leveling. Um, you probably have noticed this in my previous videos, how crazy I am about bed leveling. I, it is just literally a difference maker. At least it has been for my model. Um, it comes with auto bed leveling, but that's just to compensate for the small differences. Having really good leveling can make or break your prints. It, it, the quality goes up and down. I actually didn't level my bed uh, for like a month as I was printing the whole Iron Man suit. And with bigger prints, the quality, you know, isn't as noticeable, but certain things were just not as optimal, as perfect as they were initially. And I was kind of like, why is it getting worse? I've done this more and more. I've used the same material, the same PLA, the same settings. I've only swapped the nozzle and they're good. What's going on? Lo and behold, I leveled my bed and everything started looking much, much cleaner and better. I cannot stress enough this point. Guys, you, and people are messing me all the time. Hey, this print fails all the time. It's not sticking. You could just see in the initial step, it is not sticking correctly. Of course your print's gonna fail. I had that for the first month. I couldn't print a single thing really well because my bed was so awfully level. And it's a little tricky when you're starting out in this hobby, understanding how to correctly level it and what you know your print should look like when it's leveled. But once you do it a couple of times, you figure it out. So if you think you cannot print something because of your printer or your filament or your slicer settings, really check that bed level link. Really, maybe lower your Z offset a little bit. Check those knobs. Maybe just do it from scratch completely again. That's helped me several times. 
it's super, super important. You know, you think bed adhesion is the issue, but if your bed is not level, nothing can stick on it. You know, you can't print on something going like this. I cannot stress this number enough. Number one thing, that mistake that I made and people make all the time that I see is bed leveling. Make sure your bed is very well leveled and calibrated well, then your prints will come out much cleaner, much better, much higher successful rate. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful for you in any sort of way, smash the thumbs up, really helps me out. Hit the sub button down below for more 3D printed content. If you think I missed any sort of mistake that people often make in 3D printing, drop it down in the comments section. Uh, I'd love to hear your guys' feedback. And that's it for this video, so I'll see you guys in the next one.